And what do you think that little girl in the photo wearing the sash, we think of you now having finally done it? That little girl was very shy and I think she would be very proud, maybe a little shocked, but certainly they're celebrating with me. When I was 10, I was severely burned in a fire. The water heater ignited the fumes and a huge ball of flame just went through the house. I was completely on fire. I was 10. All of a sudden, I really thought I looked like a monster. I remember watching the Miss America pageant for the first time and I looked down at my scars and thought, well, that's never gonna happen for me. We were looking through photo albums at my dad's house. My daughter, she comes in and grabs a random album. Here, mommy, look at this one. And then she jets out of the room. And it was the one that had me dressed as Miss America before the fire. And I thought, well, this is interesting because I hadn't seen that picture for a long time. And that dream was just starting to build back up in me. And it just validated the fact that, yeah, you know what, I am beautiful. And I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of what I see in the mirror. And why can't I put myself in a pageant? Annette, so tell me your story. When I was 10, I was severely burned in a fire and there had been an odorless and undetectable gas leak from a non-functioning valve in our furnace. And when my mom turned on the water to make coffee, the water heater ignited the fumes and a huge ball of flame just went through the house following those fumes throughout the basement, up the stairs and into the kitchen, engulfing everything and everyone in its path, including my dad and my brother and myself. I was completely on fire. When I got outside, I was still on fire. Within the first 24 hours, I wasn't expected to live. I was in a coma and my family was encouraged to come and say goodbye. I was 10. Getting through all of that and surviving it was really my first battle. A lot of pain, tons and tons of surgeries, physical therapy, pressure garments, face masks, all of that that I had to wear for years and years and years. And just facing the world looking different covered in scars. It was not just a physical battle, but became an emotional battle as well. I didn't know how to present myself to the world. I didn't know how other people were going to accept me or if they were going to accept me at all. And I certainly didn't know how I was going to accept myself. All of a sudden, I really thought I looked like a monster. There was definitely teasing in the middle school and high school particularly, and some of it was when I went places that I didn't know. It was a tool for other people to use to tear me down. And I used it to tear myself down too for a long time. How did you come to kind of accept yourself? I see my scars as a gift because they've taught me so much about growing our true beauty, digging into our souls and developing our character. My scars are a symbol of where I've been but they certainly don't dictate where I'm headed. How'd you meet your husband? We were both drugged to this singles party, brought there kind of reluctantly by other people, like, okay, I guess I'll go do this. And we just ended up talking. He fell in love with the fact that I was a pig farmer from Iowa. I think he was all in. <laughs> we grew up in a lot of the same morals. She's a tough woman, and clearly she's been through a lot and came in on top on everything she's done. That's what kind of really did it for me. From the beginning, after I met him, I'd been in relationships that weren't extremely supportive. And I told him one of my dreams from the beginning, and he's like, let's do it. And he knew me for a week. And I knew that his heart was all in. When I was a kid, I remember watching the Miss America pageant for the first time and getting excited and watching the women cross the stage. And there was the moment then that I looked down at my scars and thought, well, that's never gonna happen for me. My daughter, who was three at the time, we were looking through photo albums at my dad's house. She comes in and grabs a random album. Here, mommy, look at this one. And then she jets out of the room. And it was the one that had me dressed as Miss America before the fire. And I thought, well, this is interesting because I hadn't seen that picture for a long time. And that dream was just starting to build back up in me. And it just validated the fact that, yeah, you know what, I am beautiful. And I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of what I see in the mirror. And why can't? I put myself in a pageant. What was it like then to stand up there on that stage with your family cheering for you? I felt like it was right where I needed to be. Believing in myself enough to put myself on that stage was a huge step in the right direction. It wasn't only for me, I knew it was gonna help inspire other people, women, even men, start redefining where their beauty comes from. And I loved it enough that I'm, I just sent my application in yesterday, I'm gonna do it again.
What was it like then to be sitting there and cheering her on when she stepped out there? I'm watching her on stage and watching all her family look at her and just see her take this on and rock it out. She was amazing. I mean, she, she owned the stage. What do you think that little girl in the photo wearing the sash would think of you now, having finally done it? That little girl was very shy, and I think she would be very proud, maybe a little shocked, but certainly they're celebrating with me. I think we all have a tendency to focus on what we can't do instead of what we can do. Whether it's just healing past a scar in life or fulfilling some sort of dream that's always been inside of you, that's something we all have in common. And I'm hoping that I can encourage so many people to follow their dreams, no matter how old you are or how broken you think that dream may be.